Hey man, this is Robbie and welcome to another episode of Hey Man Robbie's Review. I am here today at Nico Circuit again. I've been here many times this past couple weeks and stuff. But today I am going to show you guys Jimmy and JT's practice cars. guys what's up what are you guys doing here uh we're here for a bit of drifting nico circuit nico circuit for Sam day nice yeah. can you guys introduce yourselves uh i'm jt i'm from new zealand and i'm working at power vehicles uh as a mechanic and uh refining my skill <laughs> yeah yeah same uh i'm up at power vehicles uh at Ebisu. i'm jimmy from canada yeah jimmy from canada yes, and sir. jt from new zealand this is like a world mix melting pot at power vehicles i think totally get both of your guys's car we call it so-called missiles but both of the cars are really well taken care of they feel like really great cars you know uh, i just want to kind of get into depth give everybody the right perspective of how a missile should be it shouldn't be just a car just to go and beat around somewhere and you know run into each other on purpose it should be something that's a little refined but yet um not too nice to the point that or you're going to be too scared to you know push the limits yeah. You guys are, have been in Japan for how long now? Uh, I've been here for nine months. Nine months? Yeah, and I've been kind of off and on. Uh, first here last spring, last spring, yeah. And, okay. uh, yeah. So let me go ahead and start with JT's car. This car felt really like a very, very basic S chassis. Um, had good enough power all around. Yeah. Um, very tight. Yeah. So I didn't know what kind of things the car had, but can you explain a little bit about the car, like under the hood? Uh, it's a black top SR20. Uh, S14 turbo, uh, I've fitted it with a gritty oil cooler kit and even since I've, I've been here for the last nine months um, I've done a lot of gradual work on it even with the suspension, um, knuckles, lower arms, we've moved the front cross member forward, uh, the rear uh, we've changed the diff twice, we've gone to a 4.3 LSD um, which has made a huge difference, uh, tune injectors, uh, airflow meter. It's been a real gradual build uh, and something that I've really enjoyed. I've had so many cars in the past that going back to basics and just chipping away at all those little mods and understanding what each each uh, part of the car does and, um, and how it affects everything else has been really good.
Dude, I drove it and right off the top, I figured that everything was modified the right way. It doesn't seem like this car really, you really cut corners. The steering mod was re really good. And like you said, the rack has moved forward. You have all the parts that you should have. Yeah. on a basic car the, the coilovers it's got some uh k-office front front uh coilovers it's old school with the rear springs in the front uh the rears blew out so i got some second hand zeals um working with power vehicles and and living here uh it has two things i've had limited funds but i've also had an open um open rain on the workshop with all the parts so that's really helped um building the car slowly and with the advice of andy and james um, you know, it, I haven't made too many mistakes with the build so far, and that's where other countries go go a little bit uh, off track mm. by going to these big turbos and camshafts at ECUs, all these different things. I mean, this has got a standard ECU with a re remap tune. It, it seems to be doing it so far. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this car felt like a well seasoned, a lot of time and a lot of love and everything put into kind of car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, anything that you like about the car other than your brick headlights that probably cost as much as the car? Oh man, <laughs> I looked at removing them when I first bought the car. Yeah. Uh, I was even going to sell them for, for some silly reason, but uh, I've always tried to keep the car looking um, kind of stockish. Mm -hmm. I remember when Andy first mentioned the car, he said, oh, it's Aero 2003, I think. And I've done my best to try and keep the whole car like that without over modifying with Aero and all these different things like the front bumper um, which is more like a factory style still steel front fenders and, and it's got 30 more rear overs but you probably not notice it um, too much dude the car looks good in my opinion and you have the most wanted favorite drift car in the world awesome. s chassis you know yeah. so that's the one well that's what you can do you can come to japan and enjoy this all the time if you want to right yeah well not now but no. Because of the restrictions and stuff. Right? <laughs> soon. Yeah, soon. soon. How long have you been drifting? Uh, I think it was like 2001, I think, I started. Yeah. Oh, so damn, you've been driving for a long yeah. ass time, yeah. So I won the first championship in New Zealand and then came out to America in 08, I think. Uh, we did a couple of the All Star rounds, 06 and 07. Um, and then I took a break for about 10 years. It shocked me how long it's taken me to get back to being comfortable, um, especially being in Japan. There's been uh, me realizing the, the fundamental difference between countries and uh, the level here. I always refer it to rugby back home, how in every small town there's uh, you know a lot of really good rugby players. It's the same as here every every Saturday and Sunday. Me and Jimmy always talk about it at, at a Beastle Circuit. On the weekends, there's always guys that are just hundred times better than me so it's really good to learn um, how to how to level up yeah all right so Jimmy how long have you been drifting for uh, I kind of got into drift cars right away well, as soon as I got my license so it have been about 16 17 I had a few s chassis but I never really got very serious with it I uh, didn't do much track days um, yeah I just always kind of had the street cars and they were always Japanese rear wheel drive kind of stuff so um yeah this is the most by far the most track uh experience i've ever had in my life just uh you know in a month here you know yeah and then that's probably because you're actually here yeah and you have yeah. access to the track yeah. a lot of the times and stuff all right so i was talking about jt's car earlier this is probably the most desirable uh drift car everybody's favorite drift car but you actually have the probably one of the most desirable japanese car to have so it's an r32 it's a Type M, right? Uh, maybe. maybe. Yeah. GTSC. Most probably, yeah. GTSC, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, a little explanation about the car. What kind of mods you got on this car? Like motor uh, and so stuff like that. Pretty basic. Engine-wise, RV20. Uh, stock turbo, stock transmission, front mount. Yeah, it felt like it was basic. And to be honest, this car felt a little more easier to drive for a beginner mm -hmm. than this car. Mm -hmm. uh, minus, this had a little bit of uh steering um how can i say you have to kind of get used to a little bit more with the ackerman on this one with the mods yeah. but they both steered a lot so it was very easy to drive but this one felt a lot more mild so the power too i think the power band and everything was just like um the jt's car was a little bit more spikier this is a little bit more milder i yeah, guess it's definitely yeah more linear the rbs which i mean 
It's, some people it like it, easy, some people don't, don't like really it, right? Yeah. Like it all that much. Like I'm just used to more higher higher yeah. revving or, or you have to be. So this has like power. stock boost everything. Just uh, no, it's boosted up. Um, it has a chip TCU in it. Oh, okay. Didn't tune it or anything. Okay. Just grabbed it out of the car. Okay. Uh, but uh, no, the big big mod I did this year would have been uh, front steering rack relocation knuckles because I'm with high rods. Um, yeah. So that was that was the big mod I did this year. That was pretty much the only mod, but I. Most of the time I spent on this car by far has been maintenance. Like this is the best condition it's ever been. Because when I bought it, this was all caved in, this side was caved in, rear was all caved in, someone hammered it out, which I really don't like because yeah, there's no bringing that back now. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, yeah, it was, it was all smashed up. So I probably spent about two months getting it uh, drivable condition. Uh, but the engine was really good. So uh, lots on maintenance, lots of time on maintenance. So what kind of um, suspension do you run on this one? Uh, it's got Grady's in the front and when I did the extended lowers and all the angle stuff, uh, I went stiffer on the springs. Uh, I went to 12, case, 12 case uh, and it had eight. And that's really good. I get JT to drive my car, Andy to drive my car, James to drive my car and they all kind of tell me um, what they find or, or what's, what they think is funky, what needs to be changed. Rears, basic K office, they need to be changed. but old school stuff yeah okay so other than this being a japanese car mm -hmm. what's the favorite part about this even though you were telling me earlier that you love his car yeah, a little bit more I, than I this thing i got the chance to drive it uh initially this year and yeah it really blew my mind i remember how much i like s chassis but uh i guess it's just what's cool is before i came to evisu i knew i wanted something cheaper i didn't want you know jzx money or anything like that plus i like the nissans um but I kind of had it in my head that it would be cool to get a black R32 and then I just happened on this one. It just kind of was meant to be, I guess. So that's what I think is cool is that I had an idea of a car I might have and it was a black R32. Yeah, but I don't know what kind of condition it was in before, but you uh, obviously did a really great job on making the car, reviving the car the way it is right now. Because I, if you didn't tell me that, I mean, it's kind of obvious that the rear is kind of beat up but, and I mean, beat up in. Here, but like the battery was stuck. Couldn't get the battery out. Couldn't get the uh, overflow out. Like that was all pushed down and, and caved in. So boys gave me a lot of, a lot of help with that. weekend um here at nico circuit they could always obviously they can go to uh, every circuit and drive there all the time but i think they want to build more experience come to different tracks and drive their cars but at the same time this is a perfect example to show that you know you come to japan and you don't just jump in a car and beat the crap out of it and not learn anything you know you can actually work on it figure things out keep it clean so you can drive it the next time you have it or pass it on to somebody else or something it's very presentable and also I've driven so many cars but these cars are very very easy to drive and that actually makes the driver better too. Driving a car that's really hard to handle isn't going to make the driver get any better. You have to be able to get into a car that's very drivable 
and you know work on your techniques and these two guys were going at it back and forth today doing tandems you know in the rain and in the dry and everything too so i think this is a perfect example to show that you know come to japan whenever you come to japan pick up a missile don't call it a missile call it a practice car maybe maybe we'll just stop calling them missiles yeah you know? yeah all right well that's it from me from here at nico circuit and i would like to thank power vehicles and also jt and jimmy yeah man when you guys see him at tracks anywhere else in the world or if you're in ebisu come holler at them and also go visit power vehicles <laughs> if you need something at ebisu uh circuit but thank you for watching and i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe until i see you guys next time peace out